Hey everybody, this is Ben Hansen from Game Informer, and I'm here with... John Garvin, the creative director at Ben Studio. And... Jeff Ross, game director at Ben Studio. I'll be playing the game today. There we go. And what are we looking at here? So, we decided to show you guys, like, just the very beginning of the game. So, the absolute first hour. So, you boot the disc up, you're in the game, and this is what you're going to experience. So, we wanted to start you out in the open world. Kind of show off a little bit about how our weather works, how the lighting works, uh, all the detail we've put into the world, and introducing our, our two main characters. So you got Deacon St. John and Boozer William William Boozer Gray. We lost him. He can't be far. Wait, hold on. Cut your engine. It's Alvarez. Yeah, so where's Leon? <coughs> Shit, she's alive. Alvarez. Alvarez, hey. Hey, hey. Where's Leon? Where's the drugs? Alvarez, what happened here? I mean, who did this? Was it... Was it Rippers? The first uh, section of the game is Deacon and Boozer, bounty hunters, on their bikes, chasing down this guy named Leon, who was a drug thief and a murderer. And uh, the whole thing was designed to introduce you to bike gameplay. Um, and that's really kind of one of the things we wanted to show off, was one of the more powered up bikes. Yes, which will become important soon enough. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things you're noticing here is that they had to get off the main road, so we call it we call it the broken road. So one of the key things uh, in the game is that the highways have, have, have all been washed out, bridges have been destroyed to try to stop the hordes that roam through the world, and uh, you end up doing a lot of off-roading. So Deacon's bike is called a drifter bike, and it's kind of a cross between a street bike and a dirt bike. So jumps like this happen throughout the game. Uh, we really just wanted to, you know, to make the, the bike gameplay itself as exciting as we possibly could. While still grounded. Yeah, I think it is pretty grounded, actually. It's like, you know, you can upgrade your bike. There's all kinds of, you know, you can, you can get uh, nitro boosts and so on, but you can't, it's not, it's never going to be like a super bike. It's going to be realistic. Deacon will never land a front flip. Can you promise that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, I, I see smoke. Uh, it's coming from his bike. Burn it on his engine! Now we got that fucking son of a bitch! You can see some of the wildlife in the game. Yeah, it's nice to show off some of the team's work there right in the beginning, put them nice and close to the path. We know the trail's at that end. Come well, on, maybe he doesn't know that. Look. Oh, Jesus. Boozer, we're on time. Come on, what Daniel do you see? Boone bullshit. Now, come on. Just look. Don't you remember a damn thing I showed you? I don't see shit. Look, Deke. I know you were a city boy. But we've been out here for what? A couple of years? You gotta know this shit, bro. What are you gonna do if something happens to me? All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, see, I... You went that way. Yeah, you know, bullshit. Come on. In this opening sequence, we really kind of wanted to introduce the player to, like, all the core mechanics in the game. So we started out with the bike, and now we're doing an on-foot tracking sequence. Having a deal with Copeland. No, Leon's been fencing shit to Copeland for a long time. Finally caught up with him. 
Hey, hey, wait, wait. Hold up, hold up. What? What's wrong? You tell me. Oh, Jesus, Boozer, we don't have time for this shit. Then follow his tracks, goddammit. Shit. All right, let me see. Wait, 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 here. Down this way. Really? You sure? Tracks are fresh, I'm sure. Really? Was that so hard? Come on. So where the hell did you learn to track shit anyway? I used to go elk hunting with my old man when I was a kid. Ended up tracking shit for miles. Bet you wore a red flannel shirt, some overalls, nice pair of chucka boots. Smart ass. Holy shit! Leon, we're just here to talk. That's all we want to do, man. Oh, yeah, is that why Tucker sent you to talk? Well, here's all I got to talk about. Fuck. Come on. You okay, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a graze. Son of a bitch can't aim worth a damn. Son of a bitch. I'm fine, Boozer. You guys might recognize this from the 2017 E3 hey, demo. Up. What? What's wrong? There's a trail of blood right there. You see it? In that demo, Deacon took a left through that rock cleft and ended up heading into an ambush camp. In this one, he's going to take a right. Yeah, yeah, I see it. There's blood on the rail. He must be heading down there toward the falls. Yeah. He's losing a lot of blood. He's not getting far. Come on. How many writers are working on this game? To be honest, just mostly one. Really? Yeah. And that is me. <laughs> Search him. Bleeding out. Well, that's a hell of a way to go. It's slow. A lot of pain, but I suppose you'd know all about that. She was still breathing when we found her, you piece of shit. I wasn't gonna waste a bullet, not on her. Oh, hold on for a second, hold on for a second now. Where's the stash, Leon? If you tell us, uh, unlike you, I can promise you, we'll make it quick. Don't look like you'd be suffering for too long. Leon, you got a little problem here, see? They can smell your blood. From all the way down there. What do you suppose that feels like? Huh? Torn apart? Eat alive? Guess he's gonna find out. Up yours. Goodbye, Leon. No, wait. All right, all right. No, no. I got it right here. Take it. Where? In the cemetery. It's in the old cemetery. Thank you. No, you said. Do it. Don't leave me out here, man. You said you would make it quick. Do it. Do it! You goddamn liar! Do it. All right, John, as creative director, how are you feeling about this? Uh... Me, personally, I would say shoot him. Why didn't you just write and then he can shot the guy then? Well, because there's no right answer. You okay, know, there's, okay. There's different answers, and it's a chance for the player to express themselves and kind of how much they relate to the world and see what the consequences might be. And it's one of those things where, you know, so, so Deacon St. John is in a certain state at the start of the story, right? His, he's got a certain moral compass. Um, the player has some agency over how to control that. And we give you all the information you need here. It's like things that you do during the game are going to have an impact, especially on your best friend, Boozer. So this is really one of those sort of marquee moments where you get to kind of choose how you're going to affect uh, your brother in the game because it's obvious that they're both members of the same outlaw MC. And so we just kind of throw this in there right at the very beginning to, uh, to make sure that the player is aware that there are key points in the game where he's going to have an effect on how Boozer feels about Deacon. Like under a dozen, though? Do you have a rough... Uh Ballpark? There's more than that. So there's okay. there's moments like this, and these are these are pretty rare. But there's also optional jobs that you can do, um, you know, and optional missions that you can do. So and that then, all affect Boozer. That all affect how the story is going to 
evolve. Gotcha. Okay, well, Jeff, you're the guy playing. How do you feel? Okay, well, I care about Boozer, but Alvarez was my friend too, so I can't let I can't let Leon get away with that. So, well, all right. No. No, oh, please, you Deke. said. Let's go. <laughs> I wasn't gonna lead him to them. I don't give a shit what he's done. Tuck's gonna need something for the bounty. Hey, were you really gonna leave him to the freaks? You saw what he did to Alvarez. You heard what he said. I didn't want to waste a bullet. Shit. You ever wonder what makes us different from assholes like Leon? We're alive. I think this is a good example of our dynamic weather no. system kicking into gear here. So we've seen a gamut so far of weather the types. He left Alvarez. Hey, hold up. I want to search this camp, see if I can't find something to fix up this scratch. Yeah, okay. Need yeah, this should work. Rag, here we go. Crafting, pretty important part of the game. Yeah, this is a big one. I mean, uh, the player's ability to survive is going to depend on their ability to live off of the land. Whatever they can find in the world, they're going to have to find a way to employ to survive. And in this case, there's a pretty basic recipe is what we're calling them, where the player learns new tools to craft certain items together for a different outcome. Early on, it's, it's bandages. Later on, it can turn into herbal buffs and, and stronger, stronger medicine buffs. What state is this build in? Is there any way you can describe it for people watching? Pre-beta. Pre-beta. Okay. Unfinished. Not finished. There we go. Oh, we were going hunting tonight. Take some bullets into Tucker. Well, not if it's pissing down rain. Nah, man, we need the camp credits. Gotta stock up on supplies. Yeah, okay. I don't want to be out all night, though. Jesus, I gotta get in shape. Don't be such a pussy. Come on. I'm gonna see if there's anything we can salvage on Leon's bike. No. God damn it. What? Son of a bitch. Guessing that's a fuel line, unless you just piss yourself. It's the fuel pump. Leon. Yeah, shot up my damn fuel pump. Can we get anything off Leon's bike? Nah, it's done. <sighs> Look, let's just go back to O'Leary Mountain. We'll head out in the morning, find some parts, and come back and get your bike. No, I think I got a better idea. Why don't we just get it while we're out here? What? Well. Crazy Willie's isn't far from here. Let's just head over there. What are you thinking? We were going out hunting tonight anyway. Crazy Willie's is as good a place as any. Yeah, okay. Hunting freakers? Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Hey, what did Leon give you? Damned if I know. Drawing of an angel or something. An angel? What the hell? A map of some kind. Once we get my bike back, let's head up to the cemetery, look around. Yeah. Okay. Road's out again. Ah, shit. So, tomorrow. Get the drugs, take them to Tucker, collect on Leon's bounty. Then I say we head north. We got a good thing going here. We used to, but now it's a goddamn encampment. They're like big steaming piles of shit, attracting every drifter maggot in a hundred miles. And you think that shit's any different up north? Don't matter, I think it'd do us good. Get the hell away from here. Don't start that shit again. I'm not start, fuck it. We'll talk about it later. Hold on, something's blocking the road. Careful. I saw a setup like this a couple days ago. A bunch of rippers blocked the road with an old truck. Come on, help me move it. 
Okay, and, and while nothing is happening here, this is uh, kind of foreshadowing the types of ambushes and ambient yeah. events we talked about earlier. So when players come across this, sometimes there's going to be nothing there, but sometimes it could be the work of, of enemies that have placed it there to specifically stop them and get them off their bike so they can attack them and steal the shit. And that's dynamic in the world. Like, you know, you'll have your go-to path, and just one of the times you're traveling down, it'll just be a blockade there? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So like in the E3 demo, you saw he got clotheslined. So again, those are all dynamic. So the kinds of, of things you have to be worried about when you're traveling through the open world. Um, this is just one him. example of them. Tuck will be happy about that. Happy? No. No, Tuck's never happy about anything. As long as we get paid, I don't give a shit. Uh, coming up on the old Nero checkpoint. You ever make it down here? Yeah, but the doors are all sealed shut. Generators still work? Not sure. They're out of fuel. But look, I'll get to it. In some ways, all of this is just sort of introducing areas that you're going to come back to later. So you will have to come back to that Nero checkpoint okay. later on to search for medical supplies. I don't know, but it'll be clear with all the rain. I don't think so. Loan me your shotgun. I'll walk point. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> Shit. Looks like you were right for a change. The tunnel's actually clear. <laughs> you say that like it's a good thing. I thought you wanted to hunt freaks tonight. I do, but not when half our supplies are back on your bike. Looks like that checkpoint had him backed up pretty good. Ah, shit. Look at them all. Bunch of goddamn dumbasses, the lot of them. So like we saw in that camp earlier, searching for supplies in the world is important. It's vital to survive and sustain yourself out there. So cars are a huge resource for players and um, for crafting supplies so they can turn into whatever, whatever tool they want. Um, cop cars are going to hold ammo. You know, the player's gonna recognize places to look for stuff and go to them all. Oh, Jesus. There. Come on, let's go. Wait, hold up. How many Molotovs you got left back here? Let's hit it on the way back. Leave it. Yeah. Leave it my ass. Son of a bitch. You're hoping someone's home. And this is an introduction to another one of the key parts of the open world, which is Freaker Nests. Um, through the course of the game, you're going to learn a little bit about why they build these nests, but bottom line is the player can use molotovs to destroy them. More swarmers! Look out! Hey, dig, 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 dig! Bro, bro! I think he's dead. You're gonna break my shotgun. Yeah. Okay. You're going up there again. What are you talking about? Goddamn refugee camp. You only act like this when you're thinking about going up there. Act like what? It's not your fault that she's dead. Drop it. If you'd gotten on that chopper with Sarah, all that would have changed is all the hell. Don't just drop it. So freakers, it's an infection. And if they bite you, then you become infected and turn into a freaker? Is that how this works? Yeah, if Deacon gets bit and he dies. Okay. So, that, getting bitten is bad. <laughs> in that, in that sequence we just saw where, where Deacon was kind of losing it and smashing that freaker over and over in the head, we're, we drop hints like that throughout, throughout the game and you start to learn over time, like, who is Deacon? What's wrong with him? Why is he so messed up? Why is he so dead inside? Um, and then, you know, as, the, as, as more and more is revealed, then I got know, it. Then the player can begin to understand the way. journey that he's going to go on with him. Warn me if you see anything. Oh, 
like Jeff pointed out, um, e emergency vehicles of all kinds are, are treasure chests in the world. So gotcha. there's just all kinds of useful things you can find in them. Get the sense that Deacon doesn't like freakers very much. <laughs> Other people in the world just love him. Can't get uh, enough of him. He loves searching for supplies too. This is vital to surviving. Is anywhere you can find something, you got to take it and always be on the lookout. Unlimited inventory? No, it's limited uh, with some some room to progress and expand it. Gotcha. But back to the relatability. You know, he's never going to have uh, he's never going to have a shopping cart full of supplies on him. It's it's still always pretty limited. Fuck. As you can see, the sounds are drawing the freakers in. There's really nothing the player can do about this, but you know, it's a tool that he can actually employ later to as a tool in combat, either as a diversion or a, a distraction or a way to kind of bring two groups of warring enemies together so he can use that to, to sneak by. One of the things that I think kind of makes us unique from other post-apocalyptic games is we're two years out from the right. cataclysm that destroyed the world. That's why you still have batteries and vehicles that still work. That's interesting. You know, because if it had been 20 years or 20,000 years, probably that that battery would be dead dead. <laughs> yeah, it would look way different in 20,000 years. You think? Probably. Days gone too, can't wait. So the player's got a pretty basic default melee weapon. It's it's better than nothing, but his boot knife is is uh, better replaced by melee weapons you can find in the world and upgrade those and, and even repair them. Using crafting. Using, using crafting and uh, using scrap. One of the things to repair, that you use to repair your bike, you can choose to use it to repair your melee weapon hmm. if you want to make that choice and hope that you have some scrap left over for other crafting and repairing the bike. Another next. The other thing I want to point out is that Boozer's shotgun is actually pretty sweet. Yes. So again, we're giving you access to it very early on. Okay. So you get a taste of it, but you're not going to get to keep it. Right, right. You just used the last one. You got any shit to make more? Yeah, yeah. Just hurry your ass up. So you saw him burn a nest in a cinematic earlier, now you get to do it yourself. And you'll do this a lot in the game. And you say nest, is it just like their home or what's, uh, what are they actually doing here? Hey, come on, get on. They're, they're sleeping. Yeah. Okay, give me a second. They use them to hibernate. I mean, there's other things going on in there, but you don't learn about it until later in the game. Okay. I've been thinking about what you said about riding north. Just saying, you need to get away from here. Clear your head, you know? In the morning. The most Let's important thing is that there is fast travel in the game, the bodies, but you have to earn it. And to earn it, you have to burn nesting we'll zones. Uh, I want to point out how this yeah, has been brother. a contiguous path yeah, too, all the way through so far, that we're really traversing the, the, the game space contiguously. With no load screens, right? So it is an open world, and we just passed from one of the, the opening regions, the Cascade Wilderness, into the Belknap Wilderness. Wanted a freak show. <sighs> Shit. Place is crawling. And they eat each other? They do. So they're so the, this is where we introduce the newts, um, which were adolescents when they were infected. And I already know it's a bad idea. You just ride on through. You pull as many of them off as you can. And I just, I go in through the back, down that hill, find the garage. Shit. All right, you just give me a few minutes to find the part that I need. You ride back, we ride the hell out. After I kill a few of the bastards. I swear to God, you got a death wish. Like I said, not tonight. <laughs> One of our goals was to just create an ecosystem. 
yeah. that is dynamic and alive and constantly changing. And so newts, because they're smaller, they tend to stay out of the way of swarmers, which are oh, adult male and females. So they won't attack you unless you're wounded or unless you climb up into where they live, which is on the rooftops of things. Cool. So sometimes the player doesn't have a choice. He has to go up to where they are, but he, but he can't avoid them for the most part yeah, if, he, right. if he wants to. Stay up there and we'll get along just fine. You realize even though your game is like, you know, zombie, freaker bears in it and stuff, those are the scariest thing I've seen so far. That's what we're going for. Yeah. Okay, good job. And that's an example of a scenario that plays out a lot of different ways. Sometimes that swarm will just go and attack the newt. Sometimes you could just you could just Molotov both of them. I mean, there's lots of ways all, all these missions can be played. And this is the first wide linear sequence. So Jeff's gonna take one path as he tries to get to Crazy Willie's garage to find this fuel pump, but there's lots of ways you can play this. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is one of the simplest missions, but it's got probably some of the, the, the widest set of possibilities the way it could play out. I just have to get inside that garage over there. But okay. I, I could go through this parking lot, I could go through these buildings, I could go up through the back, I go over the roofs of some of them, I could come out here on the street. It's, it's a good You can try to run and gun it. If I try to run and gun it, it's gonna, probably I'm, gonna, in trouble. I'm going to fail at that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but we just want to give the player as much choice in any given situation as possible and really just kind of restrict the amount of limitations the game puts on it for, yeah. for the sake of the, the, the mission requirements. For sure. So this is going to be the first place where a majority of players die. We're, we're, we're hoping that they, they're challenged. Okay, okay. And they pick up on things well enough to survive by the skin of their teeth. But the game really does reward people for going slow and playing smart. You know, so going in and running and killing for example. at any point is never smart. Yeah. You're just gonna, you're gonna pick up a lot of heat and you just wanna be very methodical and again, on the lookout constantly for supplies that are gonna help you when you need them the most. So every building in this game is every interior the player can enter. Hmm. At least 99%. Yeah. So being able to go indoors and outdoors is something we really wanted the player to be able to do. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of artwork. It is a lot of artwork. Those guys are good though. They can figure it out. <laughs> they have figured it out. So the other thing I want to talk about just a little bit is the setting. So yeah. because it's the high desert, um, you know, we've, we've mentioned that, you know, it's kind of sent in the equivalent of Central Oregon. And, you know, we just, we hadn't seen a lot of games that use this environment. So it's got these, you know, these little truck stops like Crazy Willies that are kind of quaint and very touristy, but they're also very run down. Even before the world ended, they were run down. Um, and and in, the, in the Belknap Wilderness, it's all you're surrounded by all of these buttes and uh, canyons that were all formed by uh, lava flows from like 100,000 years ago. So it's a very, very unique environment. I think people will be confused when you call it high desert. But in Oregon, you said a majority of it is just considered technically a desert. High desert means that it's not your typical desert. We have moisture, so we get snow in the winter and we get, you know, and we have uh, a lot of vegetation so it's not you know lowland desert is what most people think of with desert but high desert means you get super extreme weather conditions it could be snowing one minute and raining the next and sunny the next How's it going, brother? You ready? Not yet. Still got to find a way in the Willie's garage. Got to be a fuel pump inside. Well, hurry your ass up. I rode past one of those, uh, what the hell do you call them? The, the shit that Rippers put up. Sigils. Yeah, and it means they're up here somewhere. All right, so I was able to avoid these guys earlier, but you know, if, uh, if you got around the whole building, you, you would have found all the doors are locked. I know that, so we can cut to the chase here. But now I kind of have to go up into their turf. And this is when they feel threatened, and this is when they're going to they're gonna become aggressive. Okay. 
and I really have no other choice. Right there, that's why they must die. Because <laughs> they will take you out. It's them or you. Some bottles for distractions? No, to build Molotovs. Ah. Gotta be a fuel pump in here. We have somewhere. plenty of other tools for distractions. The player doesn't need to waste bottles on it. Boozer, you there? I found the part. I'm heading out to the highway. Deep, ah, rippers, rippers! No, no, no! Ah, ah, oh, oh, shit! Rippers, Boozer, those men. God damn it! Oh god damn it, Boozer, where are you? These tats are dead symbols of a dead man. Dead symbols of the lost. Get off me! The bitches, biker man. You must be brought low, biker man. For you are lost, and we are found. We will show you. I've never been burned by an acetylene torch, but I imagine it hurts. Good God, yeah! I bet it's so hot it doesn't even hurt. <laughs> and let's test that. We actually have a blowtorch in the office right now. <laughs> It's a fucked up thing to write, John. I know, right? <laughs> Why'd so, you do that? So this is uh, Sons of bitches, get off of them. introduction to the cult Rest in Peace, and their slang name is Rippers. And you saw that they have all sorts of ritualistic scars on them. They burn themselves. They scar themselves. They they worship freakers basically. They think the the event that destroyed the world was a celestial event, that all the people who are infected have Jesus. somehow been taken up. And the, they aspire to that, and it makes them really messed up. And nice job, dude. Thanks. Oh my God. Oh, shit. Uh, let me help you up. No, I got this. No, no, you don't. Oh, get up. Oh, fucking rippers. You gotta go. It's like uh, they were waiting for me or something. Fuck. Uh, I didn't see them, and then then they were on me. Oh, okay. No, don't look. I'm oh, serious, don't look at it. God. Don't look at it. Get on the bike! Oh, shit. Go, go! Oh, shit. Thought we'd never make it. Hey, uh... Why don't you wait out here? Let me make sure it's all clear. Screw that. There's a bunk calling my name. All right, pretty much like we left it. What? Not like there's much to steal. Just gonna reintroduce myself. <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh, thank God. I'm gonna go out and get my bike. Find some shit for your arm. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll head over to that Nero checkpoint. They gotta uh, have sterile bandages uh, and painkillers. Don't, don't leave my bike there. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be uh, going out on foot while it's still light out. Hey, I've got some ammo if you need it in the footlocker by the door. Thanks. Hey, don't take my shotgun. Uh, Boozer, I... All right. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Just feel kind of naked without it. Now, why have it be the big on-screen prompt button press? Why not just have the shotgun sitting by the door and you can take it and he can react or not? Because we're, you know, we, we're always interested in the characters, you know, more than the props. So to me, it's just it's having that beat where Deacon decides what's he, what he's what, what is he going to do, and then the, the cutscene changes depending on what your actions are. So to me, it's just more interesting. Couple of runs for Copeland. So this is the introduction to the O'Leary Mountain Safe House. So this is an old uh, watchtower that the Forest Service Department would have built. Damn it, Boozer, your arm's not going to be fine. Son of a bitch. I gotta find something for his arm. And this is this is basically gonna be your headquarters, uh, you know, for the for the first act of the game. And it's in the middle of the Cascade Wilderness. So Cascade Wilderness is is unique because it's got a lot of dense forest, more so than anywhere else in the game. I'm not taking Boozer's bike, I gotta get to mine before it gets dark. What the hell? Boozer, are you awake? Yeah, Dick. What's up? I just saw someone sneaking around the safe house. What the hell? What's he doing? No idea. I'm gonna follow him. See if there's some more where he came from. Ah. Uh, Dick. Cope warned us. He'd seen drifters up on the mountain. Like I said, screw Copeland. I'm not doing this shit for him. Deacon out. So you can see that we've got stamina, and Deacon can sprint until he runs out. It's one of those things where, as you guys saw, you really need to be able to run from a situation when you need to, and that costs stamina. Uh, and the combat role also costs stamina. So the player really has to kind of balance how long he's gonna stay in the fight, uh, meleeing it, versus how much energy he's gonna leave himself in reserve to, to get out. And that's one of those attributes you can upgrade through uh, the Nero checkpoints. So what'd you find? <laughs> Just like I said, those drifters we saw right there. What the hell? Ah! 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 He shot me! Kill him! He shot him! He killed him! Yeah, keep on running around. What the hell's he doing? Just yeah. running around like that. Go! Yeah. No, I got you covered! And this is where you're wishing you had Boozer's shotgun. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But as you can see, Deacon is fragile. He's got to constantly be on the lookout for supplies to craft more medicine because, especially early game, his health goes fast. Come on, kill him! Cover me! Uh, you guys gonna have difficulty settings? No, the game itself is already pretty hard. Oh, as you can see, I just, I just got on. We're always just focusing on getting and that dialed in because it's not very good when it's easy. It's a way more really? exciting game. It's a lot of fun and kind of speaks to the, the fantasy of the apocalypse by, by being a challenge. That's a bold move. Yeah, we give too much away for free by making it, by having a, uh, an easy mode. You want to talk? Always looking for anyone who can use a gun. Yeah, just drop your weapon. Uh. Cover me! Cover me! Now! Yeah! Come on! Yeah. That's the last of them. Must have followed us here. Sons of bitches. Boozer, I found the camp. We don't gotta worry about those assholes anymore. Who was it? Anyone we know? Nah, just a few drifters looking to move in in our safe house. Like we were seeing before, it's time to start thinking about heading north. Let's get your arm fixed up and then worry about hitting the road. I'm gonna be heading to my bike, deacon out. 
So the other thing we wanted to show off in this opening sequence is the progression of time as well as weather. So basically we start in mid-afternoon when you're starting that chase with Leon and then it works its way towards sunset and now it's night. And one of the things that happens at night is freakers become more common, they become more powerful. Oh, goddamn freakers. I believe someone on your team informed us that the freaks come out at night. That is true. Okay, regrettably true. <laughs> Pre-beta. <laughs> oh shit. Move, move. Run, run. Oh, goddamn rain. If it's not the freaks, it's the goddamn rain. Where the hell am I? I gotta be getting close. Gotta get to my bike. Getting closer. <sighs> This is it. This is where we left it. My bike's gone. Fuck! Damn it, Copeland! Hey! You're from Copeland's camp? Where the hell is my bike? Hey, stop! Why, God damn it! I didn't take your bike, man. I swear. I'm not gonna kill you! Stop running! Jesus Christ. You gotta ask Copeland. I don't know nothing. Hey! I just want my bike! I didn't do nothing. Oh, God damn it. All right, now I'm gonna kill you. <sighs> Boozer, you there? Yeah, D. You get your bike? Nope. Copeland's men got to it before I did. I'm heading to his camp. Come on, man. Don't start any trouble. Started it? They stole my goddamn bike. Look, all I'm saying is, until we ride north... Damn it! So is the bike more sentimental, or is it literally like, I'm gonna have to die, or I will die out here now if I don't have my bike? Uh, this is a good example of what happens when you go on foot. You're just susceptible to everything. Gotcha. And these guys are fast, especially at night. anyone. Yeah? What about when you're into blue? St. John, is that you? Some son of a bitch stole my bike! Don't know nothing about that. You gotta go talk to Manny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's where I'm headed. Not too smart running up on us like that. Being night and all. Now, keep that in mind. So this is the camp that you saw in the 2017 E3 demo. Ah, okay. Hey, Manny. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while lately. You've been too busy to notice. Nose down. You work hard, they feed you. Yeah, camper's life. Yeah, camper's life. I read a book once, Zen and the Art of Bike Repair. You ever read it? No, I didn't have a lot of time for books back in the day. Yeah, I ran a shop. Farewell. Made all the grease monkeys read it. 
Being a mechanic requires great peace of mind, it said. Try working on an empty stomach. That'll focus your mind. Manny, I'm looking for a bike. Yeah? Oh. Oh, whoa. You don't want that one. Why not? It, it just came off the truck. I mean, some dumb son of a bitch left it out in the shit. Rusted up good. It rode hard, too. The fool that rode it didn't know shit about bikes. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Shot the hell this one. I mean, we just partied it out. I mean, it didn't even have a fuel pump. We could have used oh, that. Man, fuel pump like this one? O okay. Like this one, Manny. Oh, okay, okay. See, now when I said fool, what I meant was the fools that brought that bike in. See, they didn't tie that shit down properly, so they left it like rattling around back there. Hey, and... Let's talk. Looks like you had some trouble. Got hit hard last night. Rippers again. Twice now they've been up here. Some say looking for you and Boozer. Out in the shit, folks say a lot of things. Hmm. Folks around here take care of their own. They go enough days without food. Well, you see how it is. Lake not holding out? We get a fair amount of trout, some catfish. Lake's fed by snowmelt. No one left to stock it with fish. Gonna run out sooner or later. As a kid, you used to go hunting out here with the old man. We build deer blinds out here. Put down salt licks below us. Pick them off clean. Some winters had so much venison we couldn't eat it all. I didn't think that was legal. Deer baiting back in the day. My old man had only one law. The United States Constitution. He could only see us now. America, land of the free. We are that. Can't remember the last time we had venison. With all the freaks. Well, I guess we're gonna learn to live without a lot of things, aren't we? Saw Leon the other day. Yeah? He was bringing me something. Is that right? Folks here in a lot of pain, Deke. Oh, Leon. <laughs> Thug said that he took off. No one's seen him. Mm. <laughs> Tell you what. You find his stash. You bring it to me. To me. Deke. You do that, well, we'll see what we can do for you. The bike that your men stole, that your men parted out. Salvage, Deke. Salvage. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll try to keep that in mind. By the way, nice hat. What? No, this one. Don't you ever die. Now, hold on. Leon wore a hat like this, didn't he? Oh, cool. I swear to God. Don't. You want to do business in my camp? You start doing some runs for me. Nope. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm here anyway. What do you got? Now that's more like it. A group of drifters has been harassing my supply runs. They've moved into the radio tower west of O'Leary Mountain. Isn't that your backyard? No, it's not, but uh, I'll take care of them. I thought you might. Go on. Get what's left of your piece of shit bike and get the hell out of my camp. So some of this is based on personal experience. So I grew up in Southern Oregon where there's a lot of truthers and a lot of gun people who love guns. Sure. My mom was a founding member of the National Association to Keep and Bear Arms. These are the guys that came up with the bumper sticker that says... 
you can take my my rifle when you pry it from my cold dead hands. Classics. I mean, so Copeland is kind of that, and each one of the encampments has a different philosophy on what does it mean to survive, how do you rebuild civilization, um, and you know. And so that's just one of the ways we sort of explore what would really happen if the world ended, because there are guys out there like that who would build a camp like this. Sure. Oh, Dick, Dick, uh, hold up. I just want to say how sorry I am. I, I didn't know, I swear. Do you have any idea how much time I put into that bike? It was a drifter bike, Manny. I know, I know. I I'll make it up to you, I swear. I, I put together a new one. <laughs> you call this piece of shit a bike? I know, it's not. Look, I'll keep an eye out for, for more parts. I'll hook you up, I swear. Okay, and what about my custom gas tank, Manny? You know, the one that I got for my dead wife. You gonna keep an eye out for that one, too? Jesus, Deke, I'm sorry. Just get the fuck out of my way. So, that's the opening sequence. There um, we go. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it is kind of the, the journey of Deacon's bike. Because you start on his awesome drifter bike, and then you have that for the first, you know, the first few minutes of gameplay, and then it's gone. So the player gets a taste of it, and then you gotta spend the next few hours of gameplay trying to rebuild it. Gotcha. The bike gets Metroided. Yeah. And okay. so you, and by the way, you have, it's like you asked if you could go places without your bike. Yeah. Sure you can. Um, bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just one of the camps where you can come and buy stuff. Yada, yeah. Yada. Cool. Yeah. So you can see that Copeland didn't trust Deacon very much. Obviously they weren't best friends, but in order for Deacon to gain trust with this camp, you know, he can bring food back to the kitchen. He can turn in his bounties, the freaker ears right here. And, you know, those allow him to gain trust and credits he can spend at the merchant and obviously at the bike mechanic. Hey, Shit. thanks for showing us so much of the game, guys. You appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks, thanks for a lot, watching, man. everybody. Absolutely. Stay tuned for a full month of coverage coming up from Game Informer. Bye, everybody.